just chatting with Tom. Uh, Tom, how long you been doing insulation? Almost 20 years. 20 years or so. Okay. Um, so in this barn right here, this is our 50 by 80 shop, 16 foot tall. We're going to do two inches of spray foam. So here's a question we have. We get this a lot from people because people, when you just do an internet search and they, you see the R value for one inch of this, um, this, uh, this tighter spray foam that you're going to put in here, um, and it tends to be a lower number. Mm -hmm. um, how how do you help people understand that going with the two inches, even though that it's it's not all about just the number in the R value? What else? What's the what? What else are you getting with that okay. foam? The, the basic explanation is they rate fiberglass in a perfect environment: uh, zero air movement, zero humidity at seventy degrees. When you deviate from any of those instances, the R value starts falling off. So when you take fiberglass, and if you took fiberglass in this wall cavity and just mm -hmm. set fiberglass against there, with house wrap on here, we've eliminated a lot of the air infiltration to begin with. So that, that helps that instance. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna walk over here quick. When the sun comes out against this dark colored steel, mm -hmm. it's gonna radiate heat through it. Mm -hmm. The foam stops the radiation of any, any heat into this cavity. Fiberglass doesn't stop that radiation, it just absorbs it. Mm -hmm. So in the summer, this building's gonna feel like it's air conditioned also, mm. because there is no heat radiating through the building. Mm. Uh, same thing with cold. You don't get any of the convection of cold through foam as you do with fiberglass. And when I mentioned in the attic that cellulose is cheaper than fiberglass, and, and I'm not a fan of fiberglass in an attic because it's a real world application, Fiberglass is a loose fibrous material and it does maintain that loose fiber, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't settle. So there is air movement through it and that's why the R value is lower per inch when you install it than cellulose because it's a less dense product. Mm -hmm. When you have ventilation in an attic and you have that air movement through the fiberglass, it's nothing more than a filter, just like your furnace filter. You're just filtering the air through it, you're not mm -hmm. stopping the air movement through it, which is what you're looking for in insulation. Okay. So in real world applications, with foam stopping 100% of the air infiltration, closed cell foam, stopping 100% of the air infiltration, stopping the convection, stopping the radiation, you're getting a real world R value. Okay. It's the same reason they insulate the space shuttle, they insulate freezers, uh, why uh, Yeti coolers have become so popular, they're using closed cell foam in mm -hmm. those products, they're more effective. Okay. They're more expensive, but they're more effective. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. What happens um, if we did not put the house wrap on the building and then you came in and foamed it? What, what, what would you see or what would happen? Um, we do a little extra sealing around the base, around any penetrations, windows and doors, just wherever there's daylight showing, we can have foam grow outside the building, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously we don't want. And the only other drawback is uh, if by chance there'd have to be any removal of steel down the road. If you know they run into it with the vehicle and you gotta pull off a couple panels of steel, obviously with the foam adhered to it, that's almost an impossibility okay. uh, without literally cutting out and losing all the foam. So this is cheap insurance to if you ever have to change anything, work on anything, just divorcing the foam from the steel. So the difference in time you're saying between going one inch of foam to two inches of foam, basically as a as an insulator. Uh, I'm you know we we drive here, we drag all our stuff out, we set everything up, and it takes X amount of time to cover this building with one inch of foam, and I can spray that additional second inch of foam in you know about 25 percent more time so say it took me uh three hours to foam this with an inch it's going to take us about four hours to foam it with two inches and and we're done it's completed two inches of foam it's never going anywhere uh as opposed to spraying one inch of foam cleaning everything up leaving having somebody come in here haul all that fiberglass here drag it all out take all the man hours to install all that uh, and it's fiberglass yet mm -hmm. and especially in a pole barn there's no actual cavity to stick it in okay. so you're trying to hang fiberglass in a cavity hope that it stays elevated through the cavity for forever yeah, for years, infinitely yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to maintain that insulation in spray foam closed cell spray foam is so effective that second inch of foam 
in my mind, is more effective than that fiberglass bat yeah. in front of the phone. And we were just working with a customer and he showed me a quote that he got from somebody. He was quoted five inches of spray foam. In my mind, that was open cell phone. Okay, so a different product. A different, some similarities, a, a, lot of, a lot of difference. Closed cell phone, uh, by its name, there are millions of little gas-filled cells in there. Okay. Spray, spray polyurethane foam takes an ISO and a resin and mixes them together, mm -hmm. heats and pressurizes them, and they're mixing as they're spraying out of the gun. There's X amount of what they call blowing agent in the resin. So when those mix together, it's going to grow a certain amount. Closed cell interior wall foam grows about 30% of the liquid volume. Okay. So open cell is same process. The resin has a lot more blowing agent in it, basically. So when it blows that foam out, the cells in it, instead of maintaining a solid closed cell with air trapped in and maintaining your insulation value, it blows those cells open. The liquid volume grows about 100% instead of 30%. So okay. it grows three times as much, has half the R value per inch, doesn't stop 100% of the air infiltration through it. Hmm. So it takes them at least twice as much material to, to gain the same R value. Uh, me personally, I'm not a fan of open cell foam. It has its places. Uh, you actually, there's more profit per square foot in open cell foam. I'm just not a fan of open cell foam. Mm -hmm. But, and if you ever watch videos online or anything, and I actually just saw one the other day, where they show in a house where they're filling a cavity mm -hmm. and the foam is growing out past the studs, and then they take something and they shave it off flush with the studs. Mm -hmm. That's open cell foam. They have to fill the cavity, they have to overfill the cavity, flush, shave it off flush I see. to get enough R value in the cavity with open cell foam. Yeah. So they'll do like every other cavity, then shave it off flush with the studs, then come back and fill in those every other cavities. Now when we put the liner panel in on this ceiling, when you come back in, what's your, what's your experience in the depth uh, and, and the R value of doing the blown in? Okay. Um, Minimum is R38. Uh, in a living area attic, minimum is R38. And what's it take to get that R38? With blown cellulose, it's yeah. 12 inches. Okay. Uh, blown fiberglass, which personally I'm not a fan of, it takes more because, again, fiberglass has uh, rated less R value per inch. So it takes more material to get the same R value. Uh, fiberglass is actually a more expensive product. And also, it's a manufactured product, or cellulose is a recycled product. Okay. okay. So, uh, years ago, blowing living area attics, uh, I always blew everything to an R44. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the next number on a bag. I wanted a little bit more in the attic while we were there doing it. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes back to the same thing as going from an inch to two. I'm there blowing the pro going through the process. Uh, it doesn't take that much longer to blow a little bit more in, and it's more effective and it saves the homeowner money. Yeah. Everybody now takes the R50 option because they're, well, the price difference isn't that much. Yeah, I want the R50 yeah. while I'm doing it. And what's that take, about 15 inches? Uh, basically, it's like 14.9 inches of cellulose okay. equals an R50. So I, it's kind of evolved into, like I told the homeowner, that when I quoted this for you, I only give you the option to go to an R50 because nobody takes the 38 anymore. Yeah. Uh, and talking to him this morning, he didn't build this pole barn just as cheap as he could build it. He wanted a quality pole barn. He wants to be able to heat it mm -hmm. effectively. Saving four or five hundred dollars and blowing the attic is not what he's looking for. Yep. So it, he's not going to choose the R38 option. So, uh, and that's yeah. how it's evolved over uh, over the years. And I've always kind of joked to people if they want the absolute cheapest way to insulate it. Uh, I'm not interested and I'm, I'm too busy. If they want it done mm -hmm. like like I think it ought to be done and what I know they're going to be satisfied with, yeah. then uh, that's why I'm here. All right, let's just draw this to a wrap here. Here's what we learned from Tom. Number one, we really appreciate him taking the time to educate us. We enjoyed working with him and his guys getting the building done. And here's how I would uh, summarize it all. 
there is going to be a good, a better, and a best option. We have done barns in the past where all we did was a bat insulation, just a fiberglass right against the house wrap and the metal and then put liner panel. We've done one inch of spray foam and then a little bat insulation on there. Um, and then sometimes in the ceilings, maybe 10 inches or 12 inches, something like that. Uh, what we got to learn from Tom, I would call is the best option. Okay, a closed cell foam, two inches thick, nice and tight, put it on the house wrap, 15 inches up in the attic. Our customer is going to have a very warm shop and we're going to have a happy customer. Any insulation is better than no insulation. So figure out what's going to work best for you. We appreciate you guys watching our video. We hope you learned something and um, we'd love to help you out. Check out some of our other videos. Thanks.